have people in the audience. So appreciate everybody being here. At this time, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Clerk Barger, if you will, please call the roll. Master Robinson. Here. Master Barger. Here. Master Tudor. Here. Master Bachman. Present. Judge Taylor. Here. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite my brother, Rob Taylor, up from Tate's Creek Baptist Church to lead us in a word of prayer. Thanks for being here, brother. Will you pray for me? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that it presents. I pray for these that are, sit here on this bench as they lead our county. I ask that you provide them wisdom, provide understanding and compassion, and provide them resolve to carry out the duties that they have been elected to do. I also pray for our county, our communities, our businesses, our schools and our churches and our citizens. And we all strive to work together always looking to you for guidance and understanding as we continue to live together in this world. And we thank you again, and we just ask your blessings upon this day. It's in Christ's name I pray these things. Amen. 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 Sheriff, if you will, lead us in the flag. Please stand and raise our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Appreciate you, Sheriff. Members of the court, y'all had a chance to look over our previous meeting minutes. That was on August the 9th. I need a motion and a second to approve. We'll move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Robson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bacca? Yes. Justin. Taylor? Yes. Uh, next is our treasurer's report. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning. Um, you'll find in the drop box the report for uh, July 31st, 2022. Our total fund balance is $31,581,163.86. Um, just through the first month of this fiscal year, our general fund revenues are at 5.1. Our expenditures are at 7.0. Our road fund revenues are at 8.7% and our expenditures are at 5.5. The jail fund revenues are at 22.4% and our expenditures are at 7.2. Our LGEA fund revenues are at 17.1%, our expenditures are at 1.9. CSEP fund, our revenues are at 1.3 and our expenditures are at 1.0. Our 911 fund, our revenues are at 2.7%, our expenditures are at 6.5. And our health fund, our revenues are at 7.7% and the expenditure is zero right now. Um, this report is available to the public. Um, if anyone would like a copy of it, you can call the judges or treasurer's office and we can email it to you. Um, does anybody have any questions about the vendor's claims or anything? That's just for the first 30 days, right? Yes, this is just for the first 30 days of the fiscal year. Had, just getting started. I had some questions about the um, vendor's claims, but I talked to Dustin yesterday about that, and we got that cleared up. Okay. Some thankful feeling. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thanks, Glenn. Appreciate it. Appreciate the update. Uh, first order of business today is a proclamation recognizing National mm -hmm. Assisted Living Week. Uh, and I'm so happy to have a group with us today representing a, a wonderful place that we have in our community, Morning Point. Whereas residents of assisted living communities are active members of the larger community, offering their knowledge, life experiences, and involvement, their past contributions continue to be a vital part of Madison County's rich history, and their ongoing participation deepens our county's identity. And whereas assisted living is a critical long-term care option for older adults and individuals with disabilities that foster choice, choice, dignity, and independence. Assisted living communities are committed to excellence, innovation, and the advancement of person-centered care. And whereas in 1995, the National Center for Assisted Living established National Assisted Living Week to honor the contributions of assisted living communities in providing long-term care to American seniors and individuals with disabilities. And whereas this year's theme of National Assisted Living Week is joyful moments and highlights the incredible care provided by <laughs> essential caregivers and the special memories created in assisted living facilities across the country. And whereas during this special week, assisted living communities across the country are encouraged to organize activities and events which celebrate the dedication of staff, 
the individuality of residents and the deep connections formed in these settings. And whereas we would like to take this opportunity to thank the staff of all the assisted living facilities throughout Madison County for their dedication, service, and care they provide to our seniors and individuals with disabilities. Now therefore, I, Reagan Taylor, Madison County Judge Executive and the Madison County Physical Court do hereby proclaim this the week of September 11th through the 17th of 2022 as National Assisted Living Week and urge all citizens to visit or call a loved one, family member or friend residing in any care setting and offer a kind word and spend time participating in various virtual activities to, to unite those from all walks of life in need of our continuing love and support. So. Christy? Would you, like to, would you like to come up and say a few words or introduce the folks that... Uh, okay, that sounds lovely. Um, my name is Christy Winkler, and I am the Executive Director at Morning Point of Richmond on Gibson Bay Drive, right here close. Hey, Christy. And Sorry to interrupt. Do you don't oh, mind just sure. to come to the mic? Usually I have a big enough mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's 93,000 people listening. Gotcha. Uh, so, again, I'm Christy Winkler, the Executive Director at Morning Point of Richmond on Gibson Bay Drive, and we are very honored to be here with a fabulous group of residents and staff. Obviously, this is a small portion of our residents and staff from our community, um, but we just want to thank um, Mr. Taylor for allowing us to come today for this special proclamation. I would like to introduce the people that came with me today. Um, we'll start from the end down here. This is Kathy West. She is our Life Enrichment Director, and she is the person who puts together our social events, um, just life enrichment. We do outings, lots of different things to make our quality of life for our residents wonderful. Um, next, I have Linda Fritz. She is our Business Office Manager. And then here I have Chase Williams. She is my director of nursing. So it is with great honor that I introduce to you the reason that we are all here. And starting over here, we have Mr. Phil Beckwith. Then we have Carol Papp, Patricia Rucker. And then with us all the way over here is Miss Dory Hubbard. Thank you. Again. Uh, next on our agenda, 
agenda is a presentation of our special purpose governmental entities, which is our taxing districts, to present their 2022 average rates. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite up uh, Amanda Sears from the Extension Office. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Thank you all for having us today. Um, I appreciate, we all appreciate your all's continuing support with everything. Um, we have chosen, or our board has chosen to uh, keep our rates from the current rates we've had for several years, and that is real property at 1.8%, personal property at 3.37%, and motor vehicle and watercraft at 1.3%. Um, are there any questions? Any questions? I will say I took over responsibilities as budget contact a couple months ago, so <laughs> I'm still learning. But if there's any questions ever, feel free to reach out to any of us, and, and we'll get that information to you as soon as we can. So. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, next, we have Christina yes. from the Library Board. Hi, Christina. Good morning. How are you doing today? Thanks Good. for having me. Um, thanks to the growth of our great county um, and what I think was a pretty responsible budget this year, we were able to lower our rates quite a bit. Um, we went down to uh, five, 5 5.2 for uh, real and 6.5 personal. Motor vehicle stays the same for us every year, so that stayed at three at 3.5. Any questions? Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Ron Jackson with our ambulance district. Hi, Ron. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Ron Jackson with the uh, Mass County MS. And uh, so for our tax uh, rates for 22-23, our uh, Mass County Board of Directors has taken a compensated rate, and we've lowered our rate from 4.6 to 4.4 on real property and 6.0 for watercraft and uh, aircraft. Um, also like to say that uh, we were able to lower our taxes and increase our services. We just added another 24 hour ambulance um, and we actually have in Berea now. So that, leaves, that puts three ambulances in Berea and six ambulances in, in Richmond. So we're running nine 24 ambulances a day. Never thought we'd ever, ever yeah. see that. Um, as uh, Mr. Barger knows that uh, our volume is increasing every year. And we're looking to possibly uh, do around 20,000 calls this year, one of the busier services in the state. Yeah. So, so we were actually uh, proud to be able to lower taxes and increase services. Thank you. Yeah. If you got any questions. That's great. Thanks, Ron. Uh -huh. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, next is Nikita Bundy from uh, our health department. She's our health department director, our new health department director. It's great to have you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for inviting us. Um, my first week, we voted for the, the tax rate. So on June 1st, the Board of Health convened, and we voted to maintain the same rate that we've had for about the last two decades, which is five cents across the board. Um, so that's all, all property, all real property, personal property, and the valuation of motor vehicles. Do you have any questions? Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you all appreciate so much. it. Uh, and then uh, the Red Lake Watershed, uh, they couldn't be here today to present theirs, but their uh, rate is staying the same as well at five cents. Um, just uh, for those in that part of the county, uh, that uh, which is mainly Ben's district, uh, Red Lake Watershed actually is combined with three uh, three counties. Um, you have Madison, Gar uh, Jackson, and Estill. Um, and so uh, that was actually put in, the Red Lake Watershed District was put in place, I think back in the late 60s, early 70s, because we used to have a lot of flooding uh, down that part of the county. So, so and I do also uh, want to take a moment to thank, um, you know, all of our taxing districts and how hard you work. I want to thank all those, all the different citizens that serve on those boards um, that uh, helps with management of money and making good choices for taxpayers' money. Uh, I think this shows that everybody is doing their due diligence and, you know, lowering their rates um, and, and providing more services uh, with, with less money. So uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate everybody and all involved. 
And I also, for the minutes, Kenny, uh, if we can, just to acknowledge um, that, that we've heard the tax rates based off KRS. Um, we don't approve tax rates. Uh, we just accept them um, to be on the tax bill. So if we can make note of that. I do want to just commend all of the taxing districts, Judge, for being good stewards of your money and being able to lower the rates. It's very important to our citizens. We thank you all very much. All right. And uh, I know that you all would love to sit here and listen to a fiscal court meeting, and you're more than welcome to. But if you also would like to slip out, um, they're very important people. And I know y'all got a lot to do as well, so it's totally up to you all. But if you want to slip out, I'll give you a minute, uh, just so there's not so much commotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, thank you all very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right, next on the agenda is the first reading of Ordinance 2022-08. This is a land use change on College Hill Road from C7 to R7, it's from UC. R7 and C7 to UC1. From C7, R7, agriculture to UC1, single family residential? Correct. Okay. Is it, okay. Is it, is it 09 or 08, I think? Uh, I've got it on my sheet as 08, uh, okay, but nine, it's uh, oh, nine, uh, on the ordinance, it's 09, so okay. yeah. I would say it's probably just a typo, so I'll change mine to 09. This is the first reading, so I'll read it. Uh, the ordinance for you all is uh, an ordinance of the Massey County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, approving the zone change of the Renfro property, which is 70.27 acres on College Hill Road, Waco, Kentucky, and authorizing the amendment of the official zoning map of Madison County, Kentucky. Whereas the here and after described land is located in Madison County, Kentucky, and whereas the Madison County Planning Commission held a public hearing on Tuesday, August 16, 2022, consider a land use change request application from R7C7 agriculture to UC1 single family residential. Upon presentation by the applicant and with the public comment, findings of fact were made by the Planning Commission as described in their summary of evidence, findings of fact, and recommendation to the physical court attached here to and made a part hereof for all purposes as follows. That the, that the proposed zoning classification is appropriate as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan for the following reasons. The character and area of the property due to the residential development in the area and its location within the urban corridor in the 2021 comprehensive plan. The character of College Hill Road has changed since the property was originally classified R7 to one of a more residential nature. Development is desirable in transportation corridors. The subject property contains the required infrastructure needed for residential development and there is an established need for single family residential lots in the county at this time. And whereas the Madison County Planning Commission upon hearing testimony made a motion and voted to recommend to the Madison County Physical Court to approve the land use change request from R7C7 to UC1. And whereas the Madison County Physical Court has reviewed said findings and recommendation of the Madison County Planning Commission and being otherwise sufficiently advised, does hereby adopt the findings of fact made thereby. Now, therefore, be it ordered and enacted by the Fiscal Court of the County of Madison, Commonwealth of Kentucky, that the land use change classification of the following described property be changed by this ordinance from R7C7 to UC1 classification. Section 1 has a legal description for the property. Section 2, that the Madison County GIS coordinator make the appropriate changes to the official zoning map of Madison County, Kentucky. Section 3, that the county clerk cause this ordinance to be published in accordance with the Kentucky Revised Statutes. This ordinance shall become effective on the date of second reading and adoption. All right, thank you, Bert. Uh, at this time, do I have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 2022-09, College Hill Road from R7C7 Agriculture to UC1 Single Family Residential. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Judge, uh, this is my district and I have received numerous calls of uh, opposing so-called development, not necessarily because of a new development, but the perspective of uh, single family homes on uh, at the rate of three homes per acre. That hadn't been yet decided, but it has been mentioned. Uh, 
we have a nice development across the road with three and four hundred thousand dollar homes. Some of the residents are afraid if, if we put in uh, 15, 1,300 square foot homes that will lower the property value of their homes. There's also a concern about the traffic in that area. That's a dangerous curve, just about a three, 400 feet up from where the entrance is, where this development's going to be. Uh, there is only a hundred foot, as I understand it, uh, right away into this property, which would make it very difficult to put a turn lane in there. And I've got uh, some state police reports I will share at the next meeting about the accidents in that area within the first mile. Uh, there is a crossroads that goes right through downtown Waco about uh, less than a quarter mile over the hill which is a con congested area it goes up to the school and then there's another uh, cross section road that goes up to uh, 52 the main entrance by the BP station where there's a traffic light and if we uh, approve this development with uh, possibility of two to three hundred homes uh, you're, you're talking 300 plus more cars coming out every morning every evening so I, I do have some concerns about this I'm going to research as far as and uh, but I haven't had too much uh, positive feedback on this as of yet it's all been uh, fairly negative on the concerns on this issue that's all I got to say about that. thank you any other comments just kind of a question for Bert so Bert I, I read through the uh, minutes you know from this particular meeting and it says that there were a number of members of the public present that gave testimony I, I would assume it was very a spirited very meeting very spirited meeting yes. and you know I know that when we do zone changes whether it's in the county or the city adjacent property owners are notified and that kind of stuff and I would assume that, that was that the line share of the people that were in opposition uh, most of the people were from the College Hill Road the Fike Road and um, the College Hill or Waco Heights subdivision that, that John mentioned, most of the, the people that spoke uh, seemed to be from that area, yes. Okay. That spoke in opposition, of, I should say. Okay. Okay. So, uh, my, my next question is the zone change is requested because the character of College Hill has changed? They believe there's been a lot of residential development in that area, not just College Hill, but, but 52 in general. We've done Double D Meadows, we've done Dove's Landing, we've done Fair Vista, we've done Jack's, I can't remember the name of it, but we've done several developments in that 52 corridor. I don't know if the, the court remembers last year when we updated our comprehensive plan, uh, we actually widened our urban corridor out 52 all the way to Estill County. Um, we've got sewer in that area, uh, Muddy Creek, the new Muddy Creek plant. Um, they're hoping that that will be available to this development. I don't know if that decision has been made yet or not. Or, or that availability has been decided yet or not but we did include this property is included in that new urban corridor that we just adopted last year so uh, that together with the infrastructure being there and the other development they believe that, that this uh, a lot of times people think that, that the property is not appropriate or can't be appropriate for more than one type of development and, and it can I mean this property is is agriculture property but it's also appropriate for uh, under our comp plan for, for residential development so it's not a one or the other type situation it can be both and if you can show that that you meet the comprehensive plan and the, and the other infrastructure requirements then it's 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 acceptable that this would be considered for residential development there is there is sewer to this isn't well there's not sewer to this property yet they're exploring that option of where they could bring it over there there's a pump station kind of right down there pretty close to yeah. downtown Waco and the, I think the hope is to depending on cost and everything that goes along with that, that they could tie into that. But I don't think that decision's been made officially yet. It won't be made until they start doing their site plan work and their development, you know, their actual laying out of the lots and everything. Bert, that'll be one of the determinations, whether it's uh, small houses uh, per acre or- That'd be one of, the, one of the factors, but again, cost goes into that, the, the layout, the land, if, if some of it may be, uh, there's a, a, a conversation that came up about some of the property being wet and, you know, that may end up being a detention area. So it's not a, okay, we've got 70 acres, we're going to three, three houses per acre, we're going to have 210 houses. It's not that easy. I mean, you've got to consider the infrastructure and the curbs and gutters and the sidewalks and the streets and the detention and retention. So it's 
all that will go into the development plan, but they're not going to spend the money to have that development plan worked up thousands of dollars if they don't have their if they don't have the proper but zoning for that. I think plan. also, John, to answer your question is, is if it was sewer available, then it wouldn't. It would have to go back to acre lots. That's right. You can't right. build. If, you if, can't if it build becomes too house. cost prohibitive to, yeah. to connect to the sewer, uh, then they always have the option of doing acre lots on septic. Right. Yeah. Well, and then we also, I mean, this is a zone change, and so um, a lot of that stuff is determined once the zone change is approved. That all goes into the that next step for them as far as the site development plan. I don't expect, I mean, some of the concerns at the meeting were over, you know, and you mentioned 13, 1500 square foot house. I don't think that's been determined yet. I mean, you can't really determine that until you see how big a lot you got, right? Uh, I believe this developer has the intention of having a nicely restricted by restrictions, I mean the pods that you have to put on, the wall coverage, that kind of thing. Um, he's going to invest this this amount of money. He's he wants to have a nice subdivision, so people will want to live there. All right. Well, we'll do it. And one, one more question. What, what was the the vote totals uh, from from the planning commission? It was yeah. five to one. We had one member that was absent. It was five to one to approve. Okay. Or to recommend approval to you all. I think it's also important to know, Judge, that should this uh, pass, that it gives us then the opportunity to go out and look at the property ourselves and examine it and make our own decisions there before, uh, before the second reading. So. Right. And, and remember, I mean, obviously this is the process, right? I mean, it's why you have a first reading and second reading. The first reading is to uh, make uh, the governing body aware of it, um, have these types of discussions. Uh, then the second reading is the actual public hearing. So we will actually advertise uh, for this second reading. Uh, and uh, anybody that would like to come either in favor of or uh, that's opposed, you know, can come and share their, their feelings and their thoughts at that public hearing. As, as well as the applicant will be able to kind of maybe help answer some of y'all's questions. They're represented today, but, I, you know, they're just here to, to observe, I think. But, but they'll have the opportunity to, to uh, present and answer any questions that you have at that time, right. too. And the, and the second reading really actually sort of runs like the planning and zoning meeting does. It's, it's, it's kind of a public hearing. And it is a public hearing, but it's important to remember that you all have a planning commission to do the public hearing for you, yes. to gather the evidence, to, to, to hear all the testimony, to, to, be, uh, to be involved in the comprehensive plan development and, and to be in that document every day um, because you all don't do that. You, that's why you have a planning commission. So um, it's important, I think, to lean on their on their experience and, and, and what they've heard during this process from the applicant and the, and the people that were against it and and that's why they make a recommendation again that's that's the process sure. Bert is there a possibility since we usually on a two-week uh, rotation our next two-week meeting or it's gonna be three weeks this time uh, our next reg regular scheduled meeting would be in Berea could we put that uh, one term off and so we can have the, the meeting the second reading here at this courthouse in Richmond since it's closer to Waco. I mean, I'd have to talk to the applicant and see if that fit with their schedule and have to check with uh, the judge's office on the agenda and make sure that that works, but um, we can have that conversation. Okay. I'm just, if you'd look into that, I appreciate yeah. it. Any other comments? We do have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of ordinance 2022-09. Hearing none, call the roll. Master Bucket? <coughs> yes. Master Robinson? Um, yes. Master Barter? Yes. Master Tudor? No. Judge Tucker? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bert. Uh, next, Resolution 2022-106. This is a litter abatement grant funds for calendar year 2023. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. <coughs> resolution 2022-106. A resolution for application and administration of calendar year 2023 Kentucky Energy Environmental Cabinet Division of Waste Management Litter Abatement Grant Funds. Whereas the Kentucky Energy and Environmental Cabinet Division of Waste Management calendar year 2023 Litter Abatement Grant allows units of local government to apply for litter abatement grant funds to be used for one, direct expenses as defined in 401 KAR 49080, Section 3, incurred during calendar year 2023, associated with 
anti-litter control programs. Two, for litter cleanup on public roadways as provided in KRS 224-43-505, uh, and three, to meet the requirements established in KRS 224-43-345, uh, and whereas the Madison County Physical Court, Kentucky, desires to make an application for calendar year 2023 litter abatement grant funds, and whereas the County of Madison, Kentucky wishes to authorize the judge executive and or his designee to make application for calendar year 2023 litter abatement grant funds. And if the application is successful to enter into an agreement with the Division of Waste Management to administer the calendar year 2023 litter abatement grant award to execute any documents which are deemed necessary to facilitate and administer the award to act as the authorized correspondence for this award. And whereas the amount of funding available per county will be calculated, calculated in accordance with statutory requirements and the amount of grant funding each county is eligible to receive will not be determined until after November 1st, 2022, when all applications are received by the Division of Waste Management and whereas there is no local match required. Now therefore be it resolved this 23rd day of August, 2022 by Madison County, Kentucky, the judge executive and or his required, his designee is hereby authorized to execute and furnish all agreements as may be required for the furtherance of the above reference project and to act as the authorized correspondent for said project. Thanks Scott. Do I have a motion to approve resolution 2022-106? So moved. Second. second. All right, I have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any discussion? <coughs> I think it's good to know, Judge, that, that part of the requirements in this should we get this grant uh, for the county, it requires that um, Scott establish the coverage of about one third of our county, of our roads, about 144 miles, yeah. or 288 lane miles, depending on how you want to look at it. But it's you know, we, we cover a lot of the county each year. We've been very successful in the past at getting this. It's a good program, and it helps clean the place up. It's just a good grant. There are going to be a few changes this year, and this is going to make it a little more complicated for us, but they're requiring us to do three pickups instead of two. So, so we are going to have to uh, – we'll, it'll really be better for the county because we're, we're missing out on that late fall to early spring pickup period, and it, we're starting to get calls and complaints. So, but it's going to be really hard to get these groups and organizations to go out in that in those cold months and get them to pick trash yeah. up. So we, we said thing that Scott is a lot of times that's actually a better time to do it because the foliage is off and so you can actually see more more trash is visible a lot of times. Just depending on weather. <coughs> yeah. We have a lot of snow and ice during those months, so you know we'll just have to we'll see how that works for us. I talked to uh, one of the uh, or the director of this program at state level at one of the conferences and and uh, they were saying that for some of their counties that if one of the uh, organizations you talk about uh, wanted to do it and accepted you know, one of the opportunities that they then were obligated to do the other, in this case, I guess, other two, since that's how they changed it, but that's just something to think about. Yeah, I, I hate to make it a sportsful situation because we have so many great groups in Madison County and, and they all look forward to participating. I hate to hate to send out ultimatums with it, but we may, you know, we may, maybe something we have to look at. Well, we have a lot of great groups that volunteers. So. Absolutely. It's a good fundraiser. Yeah, yeah it is. Everybody's arguing. I think there's a little bit of lessons in it, teach, teaching, especially some of the younger kids. You know. I think about 40 groups is what, what we've had active this year. So. Okay. Do you have that many applications, uh, Scott, or is it more than that? Up to this point, we've been able to fill all desires. Anybody that's wanted to, we've, we've shifted roads around and maybe moved some mileage. Uh, some groups don't want to do as much the next year, so we try to split that off into two groups. So, so as of now, we're fulfilling everybody's request. Good. That's good. All right. Any other discussion? Thanks, Scott. Thank you. <clears throat> we do have a motion and a second. So, if no more discussion, call the roll. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Buck? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Come back up, Scott. Next, Resolution 2022-107, Madison County. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Madison County Board of... Hey, Scott, come on up. 
A resolution for the appointment of the Mass County Physical Court to the Mass County Board of Adjustments, whereas the Mass County Physical Court is responsible for the appointment of Mass County Board of Adjustments members, and whereas the Mass County Board of Adjustments has a vacant board member position, and whereas the Mass County Physical Court has found Keith Weaver as fit for the position as Mass County Board of Adjustments member. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Keith Weaver as a Massey County Board of Adjustments member. Do I have a motion and a second to approve Resolution 2022-107? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bachman? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Next, Scott. Resolution 2022-108, Berkeley Hall Subdivision, Phase 2 Adoption. Resolution 2022-108, a resolution for Madison County Fiscal Court to adopt roadways for county maintenance. Whereas, Madison County Fiscal Court would like to adopt the following roadways for county maintenance, and whereas the roads are described as follows. Berkeley Hall Subdivision, Phase 2. The first road is Hampton Hall Drive, 550 feet long by 20 feet wide, Partial road was previously adopted on April 14, 2015 and assigned CR number 1424. Second road will be Spanish Wells Drive, 1,160 feet long by 20 feet wide. Whereas these roads have been inspected by the Madison County Road Supervisor and are recommended <coughs> for adoption. Now therefore be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve this resolution and authorizes the judge executive and or his designee to execute same on behalf of the county. Motion approved resolution 22-108, Judge. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Scott, this is, <coughs> uh, this roads are, as you come in the main entrance there at Berkeley Halls, it's over to the right just there and straight up the uh, hill. No. These are, when you come into Berkeley Hall, turn left, okay. follow the most left road all the way around. Yeah. Uh, to where you can see new blacktop. Right, okay. And it takes in those two streets in the very back. All the building's done in there, yeah. All the building is done on that face. Good. That is a new face that you're talking about that has just started. We do have blacktop on it, but it's, it's a new face. Looks like both coats of blacktop. Yeah. 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 I was surprised. Well, and that's part of our standard now, Tom. Yeah, that's a is, that, is that uh, you have to put the final color of blacktop down that's good. Uh, in the beginning. We've had a lot of trouble in the past on that. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Just a Yes. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Uh, also, I, I want to make note. I don't. I don't believe that I read this after the uh, the first reading of Ordinance 2022-09. I know I talked about it in our comments, uh, but that for any citizen that would like to make public comment, please feel free to email the comment to comments at madisoncountyky.us. A copy of this ordinance will be available on our website at www.madisoncountyky.us under the transparency tab. Uh, also, we have to um, advertise our second reading, so. Uh, be watching for uh, that advertisement uh, in the Richmond Register. Uh, we'll also have it on our website advertisement uh, just in case that we do end up changing that meeting um, to two fiscal court meetings from now uh, versus next one since it is going to be in Bria. We'll look into that uh, with John's request, uh, but did want to make those residents know that you do have ways that you can comment and you can show up. I mean, that's what a second reading is, is a public hearing allow to give them time to, to address the court um, like I said earlier so just want to make sure that, that that's clear the next resolution 20, 2022 109 the completion of roadways in Clark Clark's place subdivision a resolution for the use of a Keiko claim and for approving the completion of roadways in Clark's place subdivision whereas the Clark's place subdivision lies within the unincorporated limits of Mass County Kentucky and whereas the residents of Clark's place subdivision made a demand upon the Mass County Fiscal Court for the improvement and completion of the roadway in Clark's Place subdivision. And whereas the roadway in Clark's Place subdivision was not completed prior to the commercial letter of credit number 90115 being released in 2007. And whereas the roadway in Clark's Place subdivision has not been built to completion to date, nor has the roadway been adopted in the Madison County road system. 
and whereas the Mass Camp Physical Court made a claim upon their heirs and emissions carrier, and whereas CACO has authorized $130,000 in exchange for a release upon Madison County's heirs and emissions claims, and whereas due to inflation, the cost to complete the Clark's Place Subdivision Railway to meet all legal requirements to be adopted into the county road system may exceed the settlement provided by its heirs and emissions carrier. And whereas it is the intent of the Madison County Physical Court to complete the Clark's Place Subdivision Roadway in the condition necessary to adopt into the Madison County Road System. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Physical Court does hereby approve this resolution and authorizes the Judge Executive and or his designee to execute same on behalf of the county. Do I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-109? Gentlemen, I'd like a motion to approve resolution 2022-109. <coughs> second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Yeah, I'm, so this is in the first district and this has been a, uh, you know, an ongoing problem festering for years uh, and I appreciate uh, Judge Taylor and uh, Scott Yarl's hard work and diligence to get this resolved uh, finally um, so thank you all uh, yeah, thank appreciate you. it yeah. any other comments questions um, so this does allow us to uh, complete this work uh, and then once uh, the work is completed, the, then we'll bring it back to the court. Scott will bring it back to the court to recommend uh, for us to take it into county maintenance, just like we just did Berkeley Hall, basically. Um, there are, I think, three different neighborhoods in this development. Um, and so once we get this completed, then this is actually allowing us to do the work. Yeah. So, all right. All right, no more discussion. Call roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Tudor? <coughs> yes. <coughs> uh, next, um, this is uh, Resolution 2022-110, Discontinuance of Roads, Cedarwood Drive, Ginger Tree Lane, and the Southwest portion of Brookwood Drive. Scott? Resolution 2022-110. A resolution approving the discontinuance of Cedarwood Drive, Ginger Tree Lane, and portions of Brookwood Drive and authorizing their removal from the county road system. Whereas the Madison County Physical Court is responsible for the maintenance of Madison County roadways, and whereas KRS 178.116 outlines certain requirements for the discontinuance of county roadways, and whereas Cedarwood Drive and Ginger Tree Lane meet the requirements of KRS 178.116 as follows. A, a public need is not served by the roads. B, the roads do not provide necessary access for the private person. C, the roads have not been maintained and policed by the county or state within a three year period. Whereas all of Cedarwood Drive, all of Ginger Tree Lane, and approximately 82.58 feet of the southwest portion of Brookwood Drive will be removed from the county road system and returned to the property owner. And whereas approximately 152 feet of Brookwood Drive will remain in the county road system. And whereas the properties contiguous to the above roadways will continue to be accessible via Highway 627 and Brookwood Drive. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve this resolution and authorizes the Judge Executive and or his designee to execute same on behalf of the county. All right, thanks, Scott. Do I have a motion and a second to approve Resolution 2022-110? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, so uh, just for everybody's uh, knowledge of this, and I uh, should have pulled up a map. It would have been easier to explain it. But, uh, um, uh, Roger, this is out in your district. Uh, this is part of Adams Point subdivision. You remember the trailer park? Yeah. And there's a section of it that's closer to I-75 that's been done away with for, yeah. I mean, maybe as long as you've been mastered. I don't know. I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, it got brought to our attention by the owners of it that those actually were deeded roadways over to us for many, 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 many years ago. Um, and obviously those roads have not been in our maintenance plan. Well, they're in our maintenance plan. We didn't really realize it because we don't ever do any work and they're blocked right. off. Right. 
Um, and so this is just us discontinuing them and no longer be part of our maintenance plan. So, all right, any questions, comments? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Stern? Yes. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Uh, next, Resolution 2022-111. This is the CSEP FY22 funding contract. Good morning, Dustin. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, resolution, a resolution approving the CSEP annual funding contract. Whereas the Department of the Army provides funding to ensure maximum protection to chemical stockpile emergency preparedness program, CSEP communities, and whereas the Madison County CSEP program is the recipient of this funding through FEMA Region 4 <coughs> as the grantee and Kentucky Emergency Management as the pass-through entity. And whereas the Madison County CSEP program requires a contract for the distribution of federal fiscal year funding, and whereas the funding supports CSEP operations and preparedness activities in preparation for and in the event of an emergency from the release of a chemical agent, and whereas the Madison County CSEP program has received the memorandum of agreement and contract for federal federal fiscal year 2022 FY22. Now therefore it be resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve this resolution and authorizes the judge executive and or his designee to execute the same on behalf of the county to go into effect upon the signature of all parties. Thank you Dustin. Do I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-111? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Barter? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Hey, Dustin, before you, <clears throat> I think it'd be good to kind of just explain to the court um, and, and to the community too that uh, Tom would call me yesterday, asked me about this, but if somebody sees us approving an 11 million. 11.4 .4 million dollar budget yep. for 22 and then they see the CSEP budget for 2022 2023 fiscal year is 42 million yep. they, they, they might not add Doesn't up look like right? Jives, right? so can you just kind of explain to the court and, and the citizens that are watching kind of how the CSEP funding comes through sure. region 4 sure so uh, we're uh, FY22 this is the uh, federal fiscal year budget for FY22, which actually we are in the fourth quarter of the federal fiscal year 2022. We're actually, you know, just a few months away from, uh, about a month away from starting FY23. But due to just the process, it takes almost a year to get the funding down to uh, the local entities, and it uh, we we do get to spend the money for two years. Uh, the 11 million in this contract is actually the entire Commonwealth of Kentucky's uh, what they receive from Region 4. Our portion of it for Madison County is about 4.3 million uh, in our budget. Uh, to then answer the other question about why we see when Glenna talks about a budget versus what we have in a fiscal year, um, with the CSEP program, we have to keep everything uh, delineated into fiscal years, uh, but we are allowed to spend this money uh, anywhere from five to seven years uh, when things are allocated to projects. And when those happen, we obviously, it takes longer to expend that money. So therefore that's why uh, that you see 40, now maybe almost 44 million if you put this in today, uh, because we have all those other years money still on the books, uh, we just, we're working through those processes, and some of those are our large projects Project, yeah. that takes you know take a few years to implement. Mm -hmm. Does that yep. clarify? I think that's good. <clears throat> like this. All right. Thank you. Any questions, from the court? All right. Uh, next, personnel EMAC sale. Dustin. Yes. So I have three, but we'll go through each one individually. Uh, first is for our communications officer. Uh, we would like to recommend Jacob Steiner at a uh, pay of $21.50 an hour 
to start uh, August 31st. The committee was myself, Dwayne Brumley, who's our communications supervisor, and B.J. O'Donnell. <clears throat> Motion approved. Jacob Steiner, judge's communications officer at uh, $21.50 an hour, beginning on 8 31 22. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Judge Tucker? Yes. And Judge uh, yep. Jacobs here Thank with you, us Jacob. today. Appreciate Thank you being you here coming. tonight. Yep. Appreciate it. It's always good to put a name with a face. Yep. Face with a name. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Our next position is our uh, EMA training officer. Uh, we would like to recommend Taylor Hoffman. She's also here with us. Um, at a uh, pay of $21 per hour, also to start uh, August 31st of 2022. The committee was made up of Jennifer Hitch, myself, and uh, Mike Bush, a representative from the Bluegrass Chemical Activity. Make a motion to hire Taylor Hoffman. All right. I have a motion and a second to hire Taylor Hoffman to propose Sarah $21 an hour starting on August 31st for training officer. Yes. Yeah. All right. Any discussion? Uh, Here. Just, I, I just want to say one thing, Judge. Yeah. On, I, I commend you, Dustin, on this, the past one and on this one. There was members on the committee who weren't county employees. And uh, I, I did ask about that. And, and, the, and you explained that using uh, someone else is from the outside that has that type of experience and in some cases will interface with these individuals and i think that's a good thing i'm glad you're doing that you said. yeah appreciate it. i think you know morgan has helped really lead that that's what we're trying to do it brings a another viewpoint and for somebody who's going to work with them in, in a uh, in some capacity it, it brings that other other ideas other views to help us so it was it was well worth it all right. Call the roll. Master Bodkin? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Peter? Yes. yes. Judge Tate? Yes. So uh, last one is our medical logistics officer. Um, we would like to re uh, recommend uh, Bobby or Cole Baker um, for starting at $22.50 an hour, starting 831 of 2022. And this was uh, a, a typo there. Uh, it was myself, Jennifer, and uh, Kendra Kendrick from our office. So one question, under county years of service, I say yes. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> so how many? Yeah, so actually, uh, Cole's with us. Actually, uh, all three of these individuals are, are current uh, staff members. Um, Cole, I think we've been about three years. Jacob, just about the same time. But he's, he came to us from 911, so uh, I think total five now with the county. And uh, Taylor, just just a, a single year for it so gotcha. far. But gotcha. Yes. Crazy. County yeah. years of service. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's really good. All right. Do we have a motion and a second? Judge, I'd like to make the motion that we uh, hire Bobby Baker. Proposed salary of $22.50, effective on 8-31-2022. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none, call the roll. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Buckin? Yes. Just a Yes. And happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you all. That's probably the best birthday praise you'll get today. That's so, right. Uh, That's really <laughs> smiling back yeah. there. <clears throat> all right thank you all appreciate it um, next is uh, personnel and planning and development good morning again, good morning. again. <laughs> Set that keyboard yeah. <laughs> every time. Uh, this is a position that we actually tried to fill last month and uh, the person at the last day decided not to come so we went back through the whole process and just started from scratch uh, it was Wendy Lynch uh, Chief Gray and I on the uh, interview committee uh, it's an administrative assistant position uh, we're recommending crystal parks uh, with a starting salary of 14 dollars an hour 
with a start date of 824 uh, pending uh, Morgan getting her pre-employment testing back today, hopefully. Okay. How much you say? Fourteen dollars an hour. Okay. Would you like to make a motion to approve the hiring of Crystal Parks for administrative assistant? Fourteen dollars an hour. Start date eight twenty four. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none. Call the roll. Master Barger. Yes. Master Tudor. Yes. Master Bakken. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Judge Taylor. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bert. All right, next, the judge's report. Um, we do have uh, several things to announce. Um, we do have a lot of community events going on, so uh, uh, if anybody's interested in any of these, uh, let us know. We'll get you the information, or obviously you can hear about it or, um, or get on whatever organization's doing its uh, website, Facebook. Uh, but the Battle of Richmond uh, Civil War reenactment will be this coming weekend, August 27th and 28th at Richmond Battlefield Park on Battlefield Memorial Highway. Gates open at 10 a.m. The battles are fought at 2 p.m. Uh, and the gates close at 4 p.m. Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department is having a cookout and open house uh, this is coming Saturday, August 27th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 1289 Boonesboro Road, Richmond. Everyone is welcome to come out for free food and great time. Uh, you can visit their Facebook page, the Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department's Facebook page for more information. Uh, EKU's Football Colonels will be hosting their annual Fan Day on Saturday, August 27th, uh, beginning at 5 p.m. at Roy Kids Stadium, with a scrimmage starting at 7 p.m. There is no charge for the event, and there will be activities for all ages. This year's Pops in the Park will be Saturday, September the 10th, at Whitehall State Historic Site. Uh, to make reservations or for more information, contact the Richmond Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Madison Southerns. Uh, and Madison Central's homecoming parades and homecoming games are on the same time. Um, September the 15th are both parades. One will be in Berea, one will be in Richmond. Uh, and then their homecoming game is on that Friday night, September the 16th. Uh, Madison Southern Eagles, they will play Pulaski County Pirates and uh, Madison Central Indians will play, play the Lafayette Generals. Again, that will be on uh, September the 16th for both games. Richmond Chamber of Commerce Annual City Fest will be Thursday, September 15th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, Long University Drive on EKU's campus. Uh, if your business or organization would like to set up a booth, contact the Richmond Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and then Madison County Courthouse's uh, buildings and its related offices will be closed on Monday, September the 5th uh, for the Labor Day holiday. We will reopen on Tuesday, September 6th at 8 a.m. Um, and uh, I want to recognize a very special person um, to Madison County government and employees. Uh, and I would like to recognize Robin Fain today. Um, she is a, a breath of fresh air um, for our county government. Um, it was a surprise. Yeah. Um, uh, but she really is. And, and a lot of the folks that are in here, you all know how vital she is to our organization. Um, the, just the, the communication that she does, uh, keeping me in line, keeping me where I need to be, uh, doing my calendar. I, I really do not know what I'd do without you. Um, and so I appreciate you and I value you more than you will ever know. And I'm, I know that a lot of other people feel the same way. So pre appreciate the job well done every day. All right. And I probably will not live this one down either, by the way she's looking at me back there right now. So, All right, that's all I've got. Comments from magistrates. Raj, how about you? Well, I can't remember where I started, stopped last time. So, the only thing I've got uh, written down that's uh, that, uh, fairly important, Tate's Creek Road. Uh, there's a small bridge on Tate's Creek Road right past uh, well, it's the Antioch Church is where it's at, and that's right past Whitlock Road, maybe another half mile or something. But that road, uh, uh, that bridge is uh, needing repair. Uh, Mr. McIntosh called me and said that, uh, they would try to start today or about tomorrow, probably. Uh, I don't think the whole bridge is coming out. He said they were going to try to leave one lane open to get traffic through. But if that doesn't work and they have to take part of the bridge out, uh, people's going to have to go Jack's Creek. 
everybody in Valley View or whatever, that you, they'll have signs up, I'm sure, if the road's going to be completely closed or whatever. But uh, that's about all I got is that one Tate Street Road. All right. Thanks, Raj. Right. Ben. Judge, before we move on, can I ask a question? I had a couple of calls about the Valley View Ferry. Is there a schedule for when it's open? Yeah, it's, there's signs posted uh, each way you come and go. And, uh, Typically time. daily with the exception of high water and right. events like right. that, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a sign that uh, if it's going to be closed, if, if they pull it down and it shows closed, if that's folded up to where you can't see the word closed, I mean, it's open and running. Just past God's blind there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's different places for them in, in, in Fayette County. Just when you can't do it. Thank you. Ben. Uh, you know, I'd like to make a comment on the uh, first reading of Ordinance 2022-9 land use proposed change. Um, as, as a person who has served on planning and zoning commissions, I appreciate the work that they do uh, because I've done that. And uh, you know, I also appreciate, you know, those folks out there that are in opposition uh, concerns that they come back to the public hearing uh, that we can have on this and hear, and, and hear their concerns. Um, because I can tell you, I reluctantly uh, voted yes. And the only reason why I did is because uh, I want to go see the property uh, and I also want to hear those concerns uh, in public uh, before rendering my final decision on that one. Uh, I'm all for development, uh, I am, and uh, as long as it's the right development, uh, and I'm not necessarily for development that is gonna have, you know, three homes on an acre lot. Uh, but I understand also the developer's point of view about wanting to maximize uh, you know, their development and, and potential earnings from said development. So, you know, I wanted to make a comment on that and, and I want to go see it and I want to encourage those that have concerns to be at that meeting when we have it because I want their input uh, before I render, you know, my final decision on, on whether or not we should change this, okay? And the second comment I'd like to make is on the um, completion of roadways on uh, Clark's Place. Uh, this has been uh, a ongoing problem for many, many years. Uh, and I'm glad that you know, Judge and Scott and Keiko uh, were able to find a resolution to the problem. Uh, I don't know if the 130,000 is gonna cover all, uh, but it should cover a good portion of it to my understanding. So. As Judge said, there's lots of stuff going on this weekend and coming months and whatever, and you know, come out to those events. That's all I got. Yeah, that uh, Clark's place. Just to comment on that, man. That Clark's place. Some of these things, you know, it was a. It's kind of a frustrating deal. Sure. Um, that uh, goes back well beyond our time here. Mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that should have never happened, but uh, but uh, we did get resolved. So. Thank you all. Yeah. Tom. So just several things, Judge. Um, I want to take the opportunity to thank the state there. I was out on Cal East <coughs> and uh, Crooksville day before yesterday, and they've got the new black top out there just in time uh, for rock um, and roll at the Cal East out there. It's uh, really busy with Kirksville. It's a big cut through over there, but um, they got new black top down. I'm thankful for that. Also, I had a request that I'll talk to the state about for Crooksville Road about putting a, a center stripe on that road. It didn't have one before. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. They've got regulations to follow about when they do that and when they don't do that. But anyway, I'm going to pass that along. I've had several um, uh, questions, Judge, about Internet access and where we're going and when we're going and, and all of that. And, of course, you know, we've been working on this project for a while now. And uh, I've just asked folks just to be patient. Uh, September the 5th, which I guess is a holiday, so September the 6th, we should have some information on maps and, and costs and things like that and be able to make you know, further decisions on that. So just be patient with us on that. Uh, we all went to a conference uh, last week up in uh, Louisville to the governor's local issue conference, and you always pick up something good in those conferences. 
you know, a lot of times you hear repetitive stuff, but you always make new contacts. You always get something. I never, never yet been to one of those that I didn't come back with something useful, and this one was no different. Um, I hate to bring this up, Judge, since I campaigned on it in the spring, but the Kingston turning lane, I've had several concerns and issues and questions about that. The Kingston turning lane, there was some issues with the right of way and a gas line down there. So that project is going to be a relet in October. Is that correct, Judge? So we're, we've been told. Unfortunately, that means that no action will probably be taken on that until next year, spring, early summer. They may even wait till school's out to do that. But that is the problem with there. And I say that simply because if you live in that area, you know what a disaster that it is to get in and out through there when school's going on. And I know people get get caught up and backed up and have to wait long periods of time. You know, if you're sitting in a car for 10 minutes, Robin, you're sitting for a long time. That's a long time to sit in the car and wait for something to happen. Um, with that, I want to uh, thank Sheriff Cole over there for sending deputies down there to help with the traffic down there. Sheriff, we appreciate that. And the folks that live down there do uh, also. Also want to remind everybody again, we get, uh, we're still getting lots of calls and concerns about things to happen on our state highways. And I just want to remind you again, state crews right now, ours is no different. A big portion of our state crews are in Eastern Kentucky. That's our manpower and that's also the equipment up there. This is just three weeks since just devastating floods down there. And uh, that, you know, just, so I'm just asking, I'm telling you this, just please call me all you want to, but just be patient in them actually showing up to do work down there. So they, those folks are still in dire need of help and they're getting it from the state. Um, having said that, I want to uh, thank Brandon because I called him last week while we were up at the conference, Judge. I'd gotten a couple of calls about some safety issues out on uh, uh, US 25, that's KY 3376, and uh, he sent uh, a prisoner crew out there and done some work out there, and we certainly appreciate that and made that a lot better for the residents in some line of sight issues. And I'm meeting him with him today for a couple of other issues down in Kingston on uh, line of sight, and I'm sure there'll be the same response for that as well. And uh, I drove down Pusey yesterday, um, and of course we know that they've been doing some boom one out there. Brandon had told me that he had gotten one side of the road all the way down to the river, which if you've never been out there, is a long way. Yeah, yeah. But in the process of that, their mower broke. So you've got one side that's in pretty good shape. You've got the other side that's in not so good in shape. But you know, as soon as they get, you know, it's ridiculous for a county the size of Madison that the state only has one boom mower. I'm just telling you, that's ridiculous. And um, you know, I wish the state would release them some funds and let them get a second mower because for some reason when that one does go down, it seems like it takes forever to get it fixed. But um, just please be patient down there. So they'll get down there as soon as they can. And if anyone needs me, judge, they can reach me at 200. Nine seven six five. I never call myself, so I need to look that name. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. John. Judge, I received an email from uh, Brandon Sears. He's a cooperative extension agent out uh, on Duncan. This is about the dead dead uh, livestock removal program, uh, the Blue Ridge landfill in Estill County, uh, where we take our dead animals. Has changed their schedule up there, and their cutoff date uh, went from. 3.30 to 2 o'clock. So as a result, uh, if you have something to be picked up, you have to notify uh, the county, which is Scott Dead Animal Removal Service, before 9.30. If it's after 9.30, it will be picked up the next day. That's because of the deadline at the uh, landfill. <coughs> They've changed up there. Uh, I also received a text this morning uh, from a constituent out on Union City Road. He said, we need better solution for traffic between 7 and 8 uh, a.m. in the morning on Union City and Red House Road and Bypass. Worse it's been since I've lived there in 2013. Any assistance would be helpful. And uh, he said, has the state done any traffic studies? I'm sure they have in that area. But he said he waited there 25 minutes to get from Union City onto the uh, access ramp there to get on the bypass so all these uh, state roads and even county roads are backing up these intersections especially around schools and uh, I don't see it's going to get any better so in the future I mean the state needs to look at maybe building two lanes two two inter 
uh, exit ramps whenever they can to get the traffic flow a little easier for, because people can't get to work on time if they have to wait 25 minutes at an intersection, you know. And if we're school in session and Eastern in session, it's, it's going to be like that for, for a while. Uh, our road crews are trying to continue uh, mow, mowing our right of ways. Uh, they've grown up again, and, and I know Scott's crew is working on them as hard as they can. And uh, we'll try to get to you uh, as promptly as, as possible. I got a couple of calls on the, the boat ramp down at College Hill, and, and uh, that's uh, in the plans of being cleaned if it doesn't happen the next day or so. so. I know, I know uh, we had a couple of rainy nights at the truck pool, at the fair, and the, the truck pool was canceled uh, the two nights that it was scheduled. But the Waco Fire Department uh, uses a truck pool for a fundraiser, and they're going to host one in October. So if you're into truck pulling or whatever, just uh, keep that on your schedule. I'm not sure the exact date on that, but it's around the 7th or something in October. So just uh, keep that in mind, and you can go out and watch that one. So that's all I got to Thanks. Appreciate it, John. Ken? Yeah, I got uh, a little update on the, we usually do this service, but Rob and Jill thought it'd be a good idea to go with polling locations coming up in November. Um, we've got three locations for early voting. That's on November 3rd, 4th, and 5th. That's the, we get it wrong, Wednesday, Thursday. Nope, got it wrong. Thursday, Friday, Saturday before uh, election day. And those locations are at the Madison County Public Library, uh, Russell Acton Folk Center, and the Madison County Extension Office on Duncan. Madison County Library is a new location, and they have they did an excellent job working with us and shuffling groups around so we could have that lower, large room that's easy to get to. Um, we heard from the public during the last election that there was no access to voters without transportation. So that's why we added the, we wanted something downtown that was and the library has both bus routes there's a northern southern bus route, bus route both both bus routes stop at the library so if you've got a car and you're driving to vote somewhere probably don't go to the library because the parking is is tough you can park over next door behind robert's insurance but we added that for mostly for folks that can't don't have transportation can't get around to get to the to the polls easily and the and well, you uh, who decides that, Kenny? Oh, that's the board of elections. Yeah, we we took comments from from the public. We talked to anybody that wanted to talk to us about it, and uh, you know, this has all been voted on and approved before we rolled any of this out by the by the board of elections. And the board of elections is made up of but, uh, a representative picked by the Democratic Party, a representative picked by the Republican Party, and then uh, sheriff serves on board of elections but sheriff can't serve on board of elections right now by statute because he's on the ballot so there's an appointee from that sheriff appoints to be on the board to serve in his, his place during those times on election day which is november 8th i got three maps named the same up here um whitehall baptist church this is going north to south <coughs> arlington's mule barn madison county public library east side community church Madison County Extension Office, Big Hill Christian Church on Goggins Lane, not on Big Hill anymore, <coughs> Free Church of God, and the Russell Acton Folk Center. Um, as we anticipated the primary after COVID, after all the inverse and the early voting and everything, people went right back to normal voting on election day. So we had lower turnout on the, so we've got three locations on for the early voting and eight locations for the, uh, for election day itself. Um, Kenny, will you all? You think you all put signs back up on the old lo polling locations again? We'll put signs back up. We're sending. We're working right now on a mailer to send out to every, not every voter, but every household in the county. It's going to be a whole lot cheaper to do that. It's still, quite a bit of money, but advertising these locations and advertising the dates and everything. We didn't have the time to put that together before the primary because of the way the legislation came out, and uh, we want to educate the voters more because this is not going away. This is going to stay this way. We need to get everybody in the, in the routine of being able to vote you know, three days before election and on election day. Yeah. And those hours on election, on early voting are eight to four. Yeah. Okay. Judge, can, sure. can I just, before we get to the counselor here, can I just step in? There's one thing I missed a note. Um, 
I also wanted to thank uh, Scott and, and the county's road department. You know, a lot of people don't know it. We all, all of us, we take calls all the time. I call Scott in the daytime. I call him in the nighttime. I call him on weekends. I call him on holidays. I call him on vacation. Scott, thank you for answering. <laughs> but he receives a lot of uh, uh, patting on the back that he doesn't get because, unfortunately, he hears from us all the time. But I just wanted to mention that as well. Thank you. I want to add to that that uh, uh, Scott, he's, he's not easily fooled, but <clears throat> I almost had him fooled. I went down to tell him about a road that needed to uh, boom more and uh, he wrote it down and we went on talking for a while and it finally hit him it was a state road and I was getting ready to give him some more. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's one, one more you know kind of comment uh, as yeah. far as election polling and all that kind of stuff can you remind you everybody that you know we no longer have the old precincts and all that kind no. of stuff and you, and, yeah, and, left that part out. and you can vote wherever <laughs> The only location. It's, it's hard okay. for me to remember what people don't know when we're not knee deep in it, eyeball it deep in it every day. <laughs> yeah. uh, because the legislation changed, we uh, were able to make these. It's, it's up to the board of elections in each county. You can run elections exactly like you've always had, or you can run a hybrid model. We've run it all polling locations because it's, it lessens the confusion on people, and because the type of equipment we can use is more cost effective on that. We'll get but uh, yeah, you, anybody can go vote at any of those locations they feel like voting at any time during those times. The results are still tallied in, in, in precinct form. It's all done on the back end, just like it always has been, but because of the equipment we're using and the legislation, you can go vote anywhere you want to, which is a huge, huge benefit to the, to the voters. Right, so you know, even if you live in Berea and you get off Duncan and early voting is at the extension office. There's a daycare right next to the extension office. Right. And we know when they're when the drop off's over at the extension office that's when it gets crowded because those people live all over around that daycare, but they can go to the extension office and vote rather than be told go to the extension no, this is not your precinct. You've got to go back down to Maria to, right, 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 right. to Silver Creek Gym stand in a certain line. Down that's there. right. That's, Gone. But we're also able to do that, Kenny, too, because you were proactive on the electronic books for getting the signatures done everywhere. That's yeah. the main reason we're able to do Thank that. you. Thank you. I've got a tattoo that's SSLV, short steps, long vision. Uh, and that keeps me by head in the game. It's, it took a bunch of time and energy and pushing and, and talking to get this done. Six years. I appreciate it. to get this done. Well, thank you. I appreciate you recognizing that. It's, it's, I mean, it's a monumental thing that we got done, it's, and, it, and it's not me. It, I mean, a group of clerks work together. It's, it's we've we've really transformed the way our association operates. Where we went from one of the, I won't say least respected, but the least active, active groups, to we just had our. Um, she's actually not doesn't have any formal title to have the clearance of Grant County. But I wouldn't want anything. I wouldn't want her, want her to want anything from me that I won't give her because she's going to get it. She was on the cover of the Keiko magazine this last yeah, last time. So, so thank you. I, I'm, I'm proud of everybody that's worked on it, and I'm proud of what's happened, and I'm proud to do it because it's just the right thing to do. It makes sense. Yeah. It's efficient. Saves money. So I, I, I'll, I'll give you the spiel. It's cost effective. It's convenient, and it's more secure. Yeah. In anything. You can do those three things. You do it. I don't care what it takes. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Kenny, I, I approve of the new location and the new way of voting. Uh, do you think this has anything to do with the low turnout? Uh, no, low turnout was uh, probably just primary, and it didn't. It probably didn't help. Like I say, we couldn't get educated. We well, couldn't. Everybody should know by now. We're, yeah, uh, yeah. Things but, have changed, you but you can lead a horse to water. I, I can. I can only educate the people that are engaged and interested. Just like right now, I'm looking at my website. And when you go to those polling locations, it doesn't give you a list, it gives you a map. It shows you those on the map and you click those and you can get driving directions directed to it. That's, that's makes it pretty simple if you know where to look. 
So we're going to educate folks on when it is, where it is, and how to find out more about it with those cards. That's what we've got to do. And, it, and it's all new. It's all brand new. And, and if the register would uh, publicize those locations and a couple of times, you know, yeah. before the mm -hmm. election, sure help. Thank you, all. Sure. Thank you, Council. Yeah. I don't have anything. Thank you. Sure. Good. All right. Comments from department heads. Any department heads need to address the court today? No. Comments from the audience? Blake, you good? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. I need a motion and a second to pay the claims and approve the transfers. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bucket? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Barter? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, our next fiscal court meeting will be September the 13th, 2022. That will be in Berea. Again, that'll be September the 13th, 2022 in Berea at 9.30. I need a motion and a second to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Judge. Second. Call roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thanks, everybody, for being here.